Okay. Hey, yeah. What are you doing this for? Ever since we went skydiving, I just want to be really high up. I didn't feel scared at all. Go. Awesome. Uh, you work with kids? Mm -hmm. Um, I work at a daycare. Look, we gotta be role models for these guys, okay? How do you two meet? We met at Sarah and Jeff's wedding about a month ago. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Uh -huh. You are now queen of the world. <laughs> You're feeling okay? I want to work up until being able to go by myself. Hands all the way up. Perfect. Did you tell them that we were only casually dating and that it's not as serious as you said it was in front of them? No, I didn't say that to them. You feel the lift off the ground and you feel the plane climbing into the sky. What can I do for you? Because I think you're in trouble. You're upset. You're upset. No, just no. 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 Do you need to go talk to somebody? And, and you're just hearing all this rushing air. You just hear. <laughs> and then they pull the parachute and it goes. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you. And, uh, you know, both Nathan Silver, is, you know, his parents live right down the street from me. Oh, wow. Are you in Rhinebeck, New Jersey? I'm not in Red Bank. Funny you should ask. But I have my family. My mom is from Red Bank, and I go there pretty frequently. Why do you ask? I thought that's where Nathan's parents No, are. his parents are in Red, near Red Hook, New York, oh. upstate. But they're in Rhinebeck, New York. But that's, we're getting... <laughs> Oh, he's here. Anyway, you're, where are you right now? Where are, Where is everybody? Let's find out where everybody is. I'm uh, I'm in New York. Yeah, I'm headed okay. to the Quad Cinema to introduce. Right, of course. About, to, uh, right, of course. Yeah, the film is opening tonight. For God's sake, what are you doing on on Zoom with me? That's the question. <laughs> and Dara, where are you? Uh, I'm in Marseille, France. You're in France. Yeah. Well, that explains you have a really, really good excuse for having, you know, wonky Wi-Fi there, or at and least for having the, a glass of wine. Yeah. Um, oh, very nice. Well, it's yeah, again. The it's, Wi-Fi in France is super bad. <laughs> are you sure? Is that is that true? Maybe you have to just spend a little bit more. I don't know. Right. So yeah. It might be. No. Maybe, maybe it's the places I'm staying. It could be. But uh, I hope you're having a good time. Having a good time. Are you uh, obviously uh, Kazik? You're you're obviously Canadian. There's no there's no doubt about that. Uh, and my I guess my question is, uh, Dara, are you Canadian? Yeah, you are. So. You are as well. Um, I did get to see you, and I used to be darker. Hmm. Matt's Matt Porterfield's film. I appreciate that. And this was just sensational. I'm so glad Emma, who's on this uh, call, uh, is uh, she brought this to my attention. Um, the, your your film, and at thirteen thousand feet, opened at Toronto, which which must have been really nice, right? Gratifying experience. And then you won the best Canadian film. That had to feel really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it was, it was great. Yeah. Um, TFCA prize was huge for us, um, especially because it comes with a nice um, cash prize, uh, which oh, will go a long way. This is, uh, I should just, I don't know how to, I have to learn one more thing. I, <laughs> I'm almost there, guys, where I've figured out almost everything technically, but obviously not everything. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. So you got a nice cash cash prize. I think you could use a little of that cash prize on on uh, Dara's uh, white wine. Oh, yeah, totally. Get a good Wi-Fi connection. Uh, yeah. 
Um, can you eat? So let's start. The, the film is about a, a young woman who is, um, well, interesting, I think, is that she is um, maybe a, a little ungrounded, if that's a proper word. I'm not even sure, but it's, it, there, you know, but she seems to have thrived by being in this experience of jumping out of a plane. Right? Yes. She comes mm -hmm. to kind of be fully herself in that moment or maybe even subsequently, like that's given her some level of... Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I think, you know, what jumping out of the, the film came to represent is almost like something so extreme would be, would be calming or almost a way to sort of, hmm. you know, uh, what exactly is going on in the day-to-day -day existence or where that tension's coming from, it, it's hard to know, but somehow, yeah, um, life somehow slows down a bit when, when she's when she's in midair or that uh, mm -hmm. and it's, it, yeah it's interesting to think about that with the character or or how she's navigating some of these conflicts or what her responses are um but yeah um yeah that there's a, a certain sort of vitality to those sky skydiving sequences yeah and you know Obviously, I want to try to fit that in too. Uh, question is, uh, Dara, when you were creating the role um, and you were having these conflicts, you were, uh, uh, Anne works in a daycare center and is kind of, kind of constantly having run-ins or creates a certain amount of conflict. Do you feel like your character was in intentionally creating these situations or do you feel like she just couldn't help herself? where she would cause these, you know, conflicts, which would get her into these emotional states, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think she's not, she doesn't have any sort of malintent and kind of creating conflict, but I think that she has a sort of uh, an oversensitivity to feeling like she's being judged or misunderstood. Mm or something so mm -hmm. she's constantly trying to kind of uh re-articulate herself to people or re-articulate her intention like her sort of her thing with Matt of just being like no you like you didn't understand that I was like joking and that I wanted you to be part of this joke and actually the problem is that you didn't go along with it not <laughs> yeah that I was doing anything and and to an extent I sort of get that it's like if if maybe people believed in her good intention and kind of went along with a little it a little bit instead of were so put off I think maybe things could have gone a little bit better <laughs> but also like you know sometimes you can see that people don't like you very much and you can be kind of okay with it where she's not okay with it you know mm -hmm. like if people are not if people are not uh, enjoying talking to her, she'll just, she'll keep trying and she'll keep. Yeah. It'll just make people more and more. <laughs> well, she's trying to provoke, right? I mean, I guess that's what I'm trying to understand if she was intentionally she's, trying to provoke. I think she's trying to provoke. I think she's trying to uh, participate. In the way she knows how to participate. The yeah. best way. Oh, uh, interesting. Yeah. By the way, Matt, as you mentioned, is this boyfriend, this love interest who you meet at your friend's wedding. And it's played by Matt Johnson, who did my podcast, by the way. Mm. <laughs> See, I love Canadians. I, I brought on Matt Johnson with the Dirties some years yeah. ago. And then when I saw his name, I was like, why is that, why is that uh, tingling my synapses or whatever gets tingled? I, I just, <laughs> so I looked him up and sure enough, that's Matt. You know, yeah, Matt, Matt's great. Yeah, we know he really that. is very, very good actor. His movies are awesome. And yeah, I'm a big fan yeah. of his TV show too. Uh, Nirvana, the band, the show. I, Kazik, I really appreciate it. This really feels like a Canadian film, whatever that means. I'm not even sure, but there's something about it as I watch, or as I like to say about it, that I really appreciate. You know, like when I, I've kind of watched a bunch of, we used to have a series here in the city, uh, not where I am now, but it, it called the Canadian uh, Canadian Block or something like that. I think it was called the Canadian Block. You remember that? Was that MoMA or something? 
Oh, okay. Canadian Front. Maybe. It was an a, a Canadian Front. Thank you very much. Um, and it was a, an annual series. And I went a couple of times and I really just fell in love with Canadian films. And uh, uh, I met my friend Ingrid Benninger. And, uh, oh, yeah. I know Ingrid. Yeah. I'm sure you do. It's a, right? It's, it's a small community there, right? In Toronto. It's, you're in from Toronto, right? Yeah. Or nearby. Yeah, Toronto based. Yeah. I think I, meant, uh, I heard the mention of Mississauga in the film, Melissa. Did Maybe. I not? Yeah, that's yeah. sort of like, yeah, the suburbs. Are, yeah, are no, I know. City. That's just uh, outside of uh, Toronto. So let's talk about, oh, so Anne, as I mentioned, meets, meets cute <laughs> with Matt, who's fantastic. And I, I just, everybody's wonderful in the film. First of all, I'm going to tell people that they've got to see the film. It's going to be at the, the Quad Cinema in New York City starting tonight, Friday night, uh, September 3rd. And then it's going to be in L.A. as of the 10th at the uh, Lemley uh, Royal, and then it's going to just spread wide nationwide over the coming weeks of September into October. And, um, but um, yeah, everybody's just sensational um, in this film. Uh, the bar seems to be very high. Everybody, I think, is so convincing. All the, the supporting roles at the, at the daycare center and the parents, just uh, without, without, a miss, without a missing step. Um, and um, so we know you can direct people, but talk about the, uh, the sequence for, you know, obviously the jumping out of the plane and all that. What, 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 what went into that? That, you know, was something obviously we'd never done before. Neither Dara and I <laughs> had jumped out of a plane before. Uh, so, Did you do yeah, it too? That attracted us to it, the sort of unknown. And the, uh, so yeah, um, we talked about that for a while. I and mean, then Dara was always up for this idea of uh, jumping out of the plane. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, the, that was the first thing we shot and that, that footage. It uh, was? Yeah. That was the first day of shooting was uh, was the big plane sequence. I guess that's and, a good idea. Um, it could the, have ended uh, <laughs> the the footage of Dara right at the uh, you know the edge of the plane is all you know very real and uh, her reaction. Unfortunately, though, when we actually um, you know looked at the footage of her midair, it didn't look uh -oh. quite right. It was it was tricky. Yeah, just trying to figure out what camera would be the right camera. Mm -hmm. uh, well, initially, our, our we were like, what's the best camera we could we could put in midair and uh it's, it's a tricky dynamic because if the camera is too too heavy mm -hmm. there's a chance of the camera the, the the operator getting whiplash because they mount the camera on the helmet of the, mm -hmm. uh, of the skydiver um but yeah it, we just weren't happy with the frame it was a bit too hard to control and um we didn't have the heart to tell dara that um so nikolai mm -hmm. uh, the cinematographer and i did a few camera tests on me jumping out of a plane. So I jumped out of the plane for the first time um, so we could test out the uh, what it looked like. And then once we figured it out, we showed it to Dara and she she agreed to jump out of the plane again so we could get the shot. Okay, so wait, how many times, Kazi, did you jump out of the plane? Uh, uh, how many times did you skydive? Twice, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and it was great. And what I, what I would say is it was, it was a lovely experience because skydivers are all sort of filmmakers themselves that you know gopros have become right. such a big part of skydiving because you know they show that's how they sort of share their jumps with each other they figure out you know different camera moves or how they can mm. sort of record their jumps so it was actually really fluid uh collaborating with them and, and, and troubleshooting it um and they were really up for it too even like um scenes towards the end of them and them vaping uh, would just sort of would happen naturally because there was just a really nice sort of mood of collaboration uh with with the, uh, mm -hmm. the skydivers um so yeah it uh it ended up yeah being just uh you know something that seemed so um difficult to do really just became like a lot of fun and really energized the project but you do go out with somebody and they're attached to typically right they're yeah tandem yeah, you, in tandem jumping. So d you did that twice, both times you tandem jumped, right? Yes. But it looked like from the last moment before Anne jumps out of the plane that she's she's not tandem jumping. So she was trained. Is that the idea? The character was, yeah. Well, it would have, and, and well, you know, we don't have to give away all the magic, I guess, right? Yeah. We don't have to, and then the rest is the magic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm going spoiler to get up to being able to jump uh, solo. I, I guess I'm only going into it because you know, uh, I mean, typically you might think, oh, it's the end of the movie. It's kind of a spoiler, but it is. I mean, in the, all the 
it's in the post or it's or she's or at least in the still um she's and it's in the title <laughs> right <laughs> that she's um anyway so what was this experience like for you dara um it, it, when 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 you were cast did you know yeah you had to read the screen Go ahead. Uh, yes, no, it was always, it was always part of it that she would skydive and I mean, that's, it was super attractive to me because I think I, I look at like whatever part you do, like whatever experiences you have as, as the character, your experiences too. So you want to kind of, yeah, you want, like, I, like, I'd love to be in a movie where I'm a postman. I'd love to know what it's like to be a postman. I don't know. But um, I think, I think Kaz and I were both really interested in the skydiving thing because it, it, it's kind of like an absurd extension of both of our processes because you can't, like, you're really capturing what really happens you know like there isn't there isn't a lot to hide when you're in that amount of shock and especially that being the first day of shooting like it's so interesting for that it's a very pure experience kernel of who mm. the character is like that's my first experience as the character like that's uh, a lot of information. And it was it was funny, like, um, I think months later, I read something that uh, Vertov's first camera tests that he did were mm -hmm. him falling off his house because that's like how he thought he could get like the most genuine facial reaction from himself. And so it's like, oh yeah, no, this, the idea of like a stunt or something. I mean, it's the basis of jackass as well. It's, you know, like you're getting some like very uh, unfiltered reactions, but the difference is in our film, those very genuine reactions become part of a narrative and become part of a person. Well said, well described. I appreciate that. and. Um... I, I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch the film again because um, it's very compact. But it, there's a lot going on in the, in the 75 minutes of the film, and um, and there's a lot of emotional, a really wonderful emotional performance that you gave. Oh, thank Dara. you, Dara. Congratulations. Um, again, the name of the film is Anne at 13,000 Feet, and it's opening uh, at the Quad Cinema Friday, September 3rd. So this will be up. It'll be uh, shortly and it will be, uh, people can go see it in New York City and in New York City. Uh, no, thank you both very much. It was nice to meet you both. And yes, I hope we can do this you. again, I, uh, you know. Totally. Yeah, this right. was great. Um, thanks oh. so much, Adam. Yeah, it was nice chatting. Yeah. Goodbye, guys. It was very nice. really nice meeting you both. Good luck with the film. Bye, Adam. Okay, bon chance. Bye, Adam. Thanks. It was great chatting with you, Adam. Yeah, Same here. Thanks. Thanks. I enjoyed it. Thank mm -hmm. you.